Well, one of the reasons that I ran to uh, be controller of the city of L.A. was my own frustration of not being able to find all the information that I wanted to fuel my obsession with the uh, uh, finances of the city of L.A., where our money was uh, coming from, where it was going, and also how our operations were and were they performing well. When I embarked on this odyssey of running for city controller and then becoming city controller, one of the first things that I wanted to do was to open up the data of the city and make that available for everybody to see. This is my first time in elective office, and I had previously been in business and an attorney. I really believe in making data-driven decisions, and that you will make better decisions if you have all the information, all the facts in front of you. So for me, open data was an absolute necessity. Because after all, it belongs to everybody. It doesn't belong to the city itself. It belongs to the residents and the businesses of this city. It's your data and it's your information, and everybody's really entitled to see it. I was told by everybody this was going to take maybe two years. I was told it was going to cost millions of dollars, and I was told that a lot of people would stand in the way of it happening because it would make a lot of people nervous to have all this information out there. Uh, I'm pleased to say that none of these predictions actually came to pass. Uh, we managed to do it in a period of about two and a half months, and for a fraction of what anybody thought it was going to cost us. And part of that is because of the, uh, the technology that has moved forward so quickly. And a very large part of it was because of our uh, partnership with Socrata. Now, the reality is that the city has about $8 billion in its treasury at any given moment. And of that, 90% of it is in so-called special funds. And there are almost 1,000 of these so-called special funds. And interestingly enough, the money that was in these funds was really kind of unclear exactly what the status of some of it was. So we now have 40 columns of data relating to each and every one of the funds, including how much money goes in, how much money goes out. And there's also links to exactly what the permissible uses are. And along with that is, and I was told that this would really get me into trouble, was the contact uh, name and phone number and email of the individual in the city of Los Angeles who is responsible for that individual fund. <laughs> so you can actually contact them. <laughs> now payroll. We have information about the top earners and you can see who those are. By the way, the controller is not at the top of that list. Um, but there's lots of information here and you can see uh, who those earners are that are the top earners and what it is that actually makes up uh, their compensation. This is really, really important. And by the way, a lot of this was not easily available even to department heads. And how can you run a department? How can you manage what is the greatest asset of the city, which are the people who work for the city, if you don't actually have this information at your fingertips? I ran into somebody recently uh, who looked at this and said, this is wonderful to have it here. I would, I would trust you with my own checkbook. And I said, well, if you gave me your checkbook, I'd put it online. <laughs> and, and that's what I've done, actually, with the city of LA's checkbook. I think that having that information really changes the game. We've had uh, millions and millions of page views uh, and tremendous amount of interest from everybody across the board in the site that was created for open data. Plus, I think it also begins to renew some faith in uh, local government by people just knowing that it's out there. But what it also does is it changes the behavior of those who are within government when they know that everything that is done is going to be so much more transparent for everybody to see.